Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, got my got my cartoon map. Same from last video. I'm just why does my voice keep cracking? I'm going through a second puberty. Okay. Let's do it. Um Second thought, the channel, America compared. Why other countries treat their people so much better? Okay, let's do it. Open mind. Um, you can D. What word am I looking for? D brainwash. Okay, let's go. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Connor. I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations and you know other videos like this the original link to the video will be at the top of the description below right under that will be the link to the discord love for you to join let's do it this episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on patreon if you'd like to help me make more content like this consider becoming a patron at patreon.com second thought I'm going to say something that will probably offend many of my viewers. Let me preface this by saying that I, as an American, include myself in the following statement. Americans are quite possibly the most willfully ignorant people on the face of the planet. We have access to the sum total of all human knowledge, yet our understanding of the world rarely ex- I to get my water. ...ends beyond Sorry. the sum total of all the most willfully ignorant people on the face of the planet. We have access to the sum total of all human knowledge, yet our understanding of the world rarely extends beyond our own country. And even then, the majority of Americans believe in a vision of the country that does not actually exist. It's not that we're stupid, we just tend to blindly accept that the US is the greatest place on earth, and therefore don't see any reason to educate ourselves about the realities of the rest of the world. That's true. I remember, um, in many ways, uh, I remember watching a video, sorry for pausing so early, about a really popular um american or american actor in china who like china used as their go-to bad guy in the in chinese film and uh he, he was showing some of the or they were looking at some of the films and it and it looked like blatant propaganda you know like oh china's perfect and then he just said but then look at the rambo movies and that really was a, a click moment for me Rambo, just as an example. And you can say, you know, Rambo, he was, you know, fighting for Americans while saying that he doesn't like the government for going, for leaving people behind. But the point is that those are propaganda films too, in a way. And uh, so that was an eye-opening moment. And I definitely see that over here, I can't say for other countries, that um you know i got an american flag right there that fourth of july is a seriously big holiday and that i guess you know a lot of people don't question things so we're going to pull back the curtain on how america actually compares to other countries and consider why the richest country on earth fails to treat its people with dignity and fairness i'm going to provide a list of important topics then for each item we'll compare the american experience with that of citizens from other nations hopefully by providing a side-by-side -side comparison you'll be able to see the stark contrast between how most americans see their country and how it really stacks up against the competition to give you an idea of just how skewed the american perception of our country really is let's start with a pretty shocking example compensation for what are considered low-skilled jobs we'll take the quintessential american company mcdonald's McDonald's is the world's largest restaurant chain by revenue. It operates in over 100 countries and serves over 69 million customers every day. As of 2018, McDonald's was the second largest private employer, with 1.7 million employees, Walmart, behind Walmart's 2.3 million. How many times have you heard someone refer to McDonald's jobs or workers in a derogatory manner? For some reason, people who work at McDonald's are seen as inferior or lazy or have any number of other- That's so true. I don't know exactly why. Um... It is seen as that, uh, like, oh, what are you going to do with your life? You're going to work at McDonald's or whatever. That That is definitely a common thing. Or like a, a garbage man. And the garbage man especially, that that one kind of gets under my skin because that's such an important job. I mean, uh, like, oh, what are you going to be, a garbage man? I, I mean, garbage man, I mean, that's one of the most crucial jobs to any society. So that one especially gets a little bit under my skin. But good points. I'll try not to pause Unfair and much. unkind assessments leveled at them. 
This probably stems from the old notion of flipping burgers being a job anyone can perform. But the animosity towards low-wage workers has grown significantly in the past few decades. And in America, McDonald's workers really do suffer a low wage. As of 2020, the average crew member at McDonald's makes $9 per hour. The average McDonald's cashier makes $8 per hour. The federal minimum wage in the United States is $7.25, a rate which has not been raised in over a decade and which should not be considered a reasonable wage I think wage it's even for lower position. for some, uh, if you're someone who makes a lot of tips. That was a big thing going over to um, Europe. Like, n like tipping, you're not supposed to tip. That's, that's not a thing. And it's almost seen as like a, um, like a slight on the person. Like, oh, like, what do you think I need? Um, your tips, but over in America, it's you don't even think about it. Like it, it, for so many jobs, whether a delivery, especially waitress, is the number one. If you're a waiter or a waitress, everyone knows you you tip them. Like it, there's, if you're not going to tip, if you're going to a sit down restaurant and you're and you have a waiter or waitress, the only way there you're not going to tip them at all is. I can't even think of a scenario, honestly, if, if they like, I don't know, but that's sort of built in. And so I think those jobs sometimes even less an hour because of how, of how often they get tips. Considering the fact that a full-time minimum wage worker cannot afford to rent a two-bedroom apartment anywhere in the United States and can't afford a one-bedroom apartment in over 95% of U.S. counties. Now, the all too common response to data like this is something like, well, yeah, it's not a hard job. You should just find a better one. Here's a simple question. Should any job, regardless of technical skill required, pay workers so little that they cannot afford to rent even the smallest place to live? Not to mention other necessities like utilities, food, and medicine. Absolutely not. That is inhumane and cruel, especially coming from the second largest employer in the richest country on the planet. Other notable objections include, McDonald's has to make a profit. If they pay their workers more, they might go out of business. First of all, if you can't pay your workers a fair wage, your company should not be in business. End of story. But again, McDonald's is not struggling to make ends meet. In 2019, McDonald's raked in $21 billion in revenue. But no matter how obvious the exploitation of low-wage workers, Americans are hell-bent on praising the very companies doing the exploiting. Take this article on Reader's Digest, for example. It's titled, This is what McDonald's workers really get paid. You see that and think, oh, nice, finally some news showing how poorly these workers are compensated. Then you scroll down and nope, they're actually praising McDonald's, saying things yeah, like it's... the food chain is also great for paying their workers. I saw they're it right there. It said new... another reason to like McDonald's that. Who's showing how poorly these workers are compensated. Yeah. Then you scroll down and nope, they're actually praising McDonald's, saying things like the food chain is also great for paying their workers fairly. And McDonald's is one of the highest paying fast food chains in the United States. This level of that sycophancy of is insane. If eight or nine dollars an hour is some of the highest pay in the industry, that doesn't indicate I just really that want to McDonald's pause because I want to, I, the reason I was confused was because I don't see why I would care. I would care about, I guess, the price of my food, but how would you see it as a plus that a, a company pays you less? That that was just a strange um, headline and ridiculous. This is paying fairly. It indicates that a massive chunk of the population is being paid poverty wages. This is where taking an international perspective is so critical. If all you see is feel-good stories about how well McDonald's workers are paid, you'll never know how badly American workers are actually being treated. Let's take the same company, the same position, but in a different country. Here's a McDonald's in Denmark. The average McDonald's worker in Denmark for doing the same low-skill job makes $22 per hour. Well, hold on, you hear Reader's Digest scream from across the Atlantic. McDonald's workers in America get paid vacation days after just a year of work. Wow, enticing. In Denmark, when you're hired at McDonald's, not only are you making nearly three times what you would make in an American Mickey D's, you also instantly have access to a full year of paid family leave and a pension. No slaving away for a year to prove your value to the company. You're hired and you're treated fairly. Simple as that. McDonald's can afford to compensate all their workers like this, but they won't. Because US laws allow them to exploit American workers to the point where they're basically slaves, earning the bare minimum to survive, paying all of their income and often going into debt just to pay rent, and having no way to escape this vicious cycle because they're working such long hours. This is the case across all of America's low-wage jobs, of which there are many. 
The plight of the low-wage worker is incredibly dire, and all you have to do to understand that is look at how those same workers are treated in other wealthy countries. Let's move on to another topic, work-life balance. Fair wages are definitely part of this equation. If you're paid fairly, you don't need to work a second job, which will free up your time to be spent elsewhere. But we're going to focus on other metrics, specifically the length of the work week, vacation time, and parental leave. Okay. Let's start with the US. Most Americans would say that 40 hours per week is full time. That seems to be the general consensus. But in keeping with the country's exploitative yeah, labor practices, the hilariously named Fair Labor Standards Act does not actually define what qualifies as full time. That's left up to the employer. Okay, why does this matter? Well, think of your past part-time jobs. Did you get any benefits? Healthcare, 401k? Probably not. Most benefits, when they're offered at all, are reserved for full-time employees. Companies don't want to provide benefits because they affect their bottom line. America is all about cutting costs, and providing workers with fair compensation is a cost. So, imagine you apply for a full-time job at Best Buy. You're offered the job, but they tell you they only have part-time positions, but they can give you almost full-time. They make it sound like they're doing you a favor, offering you more hours than normal part-time. But this is just another example of employers exploiting their workers. If you work 37 hours per week, you're essentially a full-time employee, but they don't have to provide you any sort of benefits. No healthcare, no vacation, nothing. This is a common practice. Companies will hire people, but keep them just below the threshold for full-time to avoid providing fair compensation. I've seen it happen. I used to work at Best Buy and they would do it all the time. And I wonder why you guys think uh, why it is that this is. Is America just more, I guess, cruel or just kind of more capitalistic? You know, because it's is it because it's bigger? I, I I'm not sure. I'm you know a lot of things I'm learning here, but I just I wonder why you guys think it is. Don't hold back. Say whatever. That's just the companies who are still trying to appear generous. Others will simply not offer benefits at all, or set their full-time positions at 50 or 60 hours per week. Sales positions are notorious for this. They'll often say, well, we expect you to work 40 hours, but all the top sellers are working 60 to 70 hours per week. This is coercion. They're trying to pressure you into working more hours to benefit them, and the compensation is never what they claim it will be. By allowing employers to define full-time work, American workers are held captive by corporations, forced to either work absurd hours to qualify for full-time benefits or find a second job to help cover the cost of things like health insurance. Both of these options lead to a terrible work-life balance, and as real wages have decreased and benefits have been offered less and less over the years, huge numbers of American workers have developed an unhealthy work-life balance. For example, in 1960, when workers had real bargaining power, only 20% of American women worked. Today, 70% of children live in households where both parents are working full-time. I thought they were about to say 70% of children work, sorry. 70% of children live in households where both parents are working full-time. Where does all this lead? As of 2020, over 85% of American men and 66% of women work more than 40 hours per week. We work 137 more hours per year than Japanese workers, 260 more than the British, and 499 more hours per year than the French. Why do other countries have such a better balance? Because many of them have laws that cap the length of the full-time work week. Companies are required to pay their workers fairly and allow enough time off for employees to maintain a healthy work-life balance. That's not the case in the U.S. So the, I think, so I'm getting that the full, that the reason behind low wages here isn't that you know that's what makes countries productive and whatnot clearly that's not the case if you have these other countries he's naming france denmark stuff like that japan uk who are clearly as productive as the u.s if not more in some areas all countries have certain benefits but clearly it's not our just you know you can't say it's because oh we we fight for you know more competitive wage it or lower that'd be the opposite it's hard to make the argument that this has anything to do with a more productive work environment if these other countries have much less hours more uh, money being paid and you know same or similar or more uh, productivity so us vacation time is a similar story whereas many other countries mandate that employers provide paid vacation and sick days the us does not 
In every industrialized nation, workers get more paid vacation days and holidays than in the US. Here's a depressing graph to illustrate just how poorly we treat our workers. France, 31. Spain, 34. Austria, 38. America, zero. Zero paid vacation days, zero paid holidays. And remember, these are the mandated figures. Every Austrian worker gets a minimum of 38 paid days off per year. Even in the worst possible employment situation, they'd st You get over a month off? A month and a week? 38 paid days off per year. Even in the worst possible employment situation, they'd still get 38 paid days off. In the US, many workers are lucky to get Christmas or Thanksgiving off at all. And the odds that it's a paid holiday? Next to zero. Let's move on to our final comparison, paid parental leave. Many Americans aren't even aware this is a thing, so let me explain. When an employee- Paid parental leave, I, I don't wanna, I won't lose the, the topic, but what was I about to say? Do you think there's, there's no excuse making here? Please, I know a lot of you guys are uh, not American and might be waiting for me to defend in some way. But do you think that there's much more of a competitive nature between employees in the U.S. than there is in Europe? Like more of like, like oh, I'll work for, for this amount or the boss saying, well, if you're not going to do it, this guy's going to do it. I wonder if maybe that kind of attitude... Um, Interesting video. Very. All right. So paid parental leave. Many Americans aren't even aware this is a thing. So let me explain. When an employee of a company has a child, sometimes they're offered parental leave, a period of time where they can stay home from work to bond with and take care of their new baby. This greatly benefits the employee, the child, and in the long run, the company, because the employee will be happier, less stressed, and more loyal to the company. Of course, offering paid parental leave doesn't benefit corporations in the short term. And if there's one thing that encapsulates the American business philosophy, it's short-term gains over all else. So it won't surprise you to learn that the US is the only industrialized nation on the planet that does not mandate some amount of paid parental leave. This may be shocking to my American viewers because being able to get paid to spend time with your newborn child sounds like an impossible dream in our dystopian labor market. And honestly, it probably is impossible in our current America. We're so invested in self-destructive capitalism that even suggesting the possibility of paid parental leave would put US politicians out of a job. That's not the case in the rest of the industrialized world. In fact, every other OECD nation, and even in many third world countries, new parents are guaranteed at least several weeks of leave. Let's take a look at a few of them. Ethiopia, a country with an annual gross national income of under $900 per person, offers 90 days of leave with 100% pay. Madagascar, 14 weeks at 100%. Afghanistan, 90 days. Denmark, 52 weeks. Norway, Afghanistan, 56 flashback. weeks. France, 16 weeks at 100% pay for your first weeks. Norway, 56 weeks. France, 16 weeks at 100% pay for your first child, up to 26 weeks for your third, on top of 104 unpaid weeks. So in Norway, so that means that if you have a child, does it go for both the mother and father or... Did it say maternal or ah? So if you're in Norway and you have a child, I'm not sure when it starts, like when you have the baby or when you're very late pregnancy. You have a year, a little bit over that, of guaranteed full-time pay for that whole year. Well, um, I'm sorry if I missed something, but I'm that's uh it's interesting. Lithuania, 52 weeks at 100% plus an additional 52 weeks at 80%. Again, the United States does not mandate a single day of paid parental leave even for the mother, and the father is never considered. I want to point out things without seeming so defensive here. I'm not at great points here, and it really makes you, you think. Why are we doing it this way? And it seems like it's the wrong way. But I think the reason why, I'm not saying this is justifiable, is that it's, it's more of a, a capitalistic, like, well, this company gives you this many weeks. Well, this company gives you this many. And it's more leaving it up to the employer and the knowledge of the employee to decide whether they want that job than it is the government mandating it. And I'm, I, I think it, it's a good idea because in that case, you're, you're 
um, pregnancy leave is up to the mercy of your employers and another employer fighting against each other to get the best possible one. And so if the, you know, bar is low and one place is, is offering like 30 weeks. So there's zero federally mandated pregnancy um, leave weeks. So if this company's offering 10, well, oh, this company's offering 12, well, wow, that's two extra weeks. Like you said, it kind of comparatively makes you think like it's a lot when you look at these other countries, clearly it, there's a big difference. This means that workers in America have to choose to either pay the exorbitant cost of childcare or have one parent quit their job in order to take care of the child. These are both bad options, which often lead to economic precarity, but that doesn't matter to the companies employing American workers. Profit is the only thing that matters. Hopefully seeing these labor practices compared like this has made it clear that not only is the US not living up to its claim to being the greatest nation on earth, but also that it consistently ranks poorly and often dead last in terms of labor metrics. Why is it that the wealthiest, most powerful nation on earth can't pay their workers a fair wage or provide health care, vacation time, or paid parental leave? You should realize by now that it's not that they can't, it's that they won't. Everything in America is beholden to the almighty dollar. Profit is the only motivator. If an action does not produce a greater profit, it will not be considered. Over the last few decades, Americans have watched as our livelihoods, our quality of life, and our dignity have all been stripped away by those who already make obscene amounts of money. Those in power say we're all in this together, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The ultra-wealthy and the world's largest corporations rely on Americans remaining ignorant. They rely on us accepting the lie more. that America is the greatest nation on earth, that it couldn't possibly get any better. All you have to do to shatter that lie is to take a look around the world. Other nations take care of their citizens. Even impoverished nations or nations that we've bombed into oblivion take better care of their people than the US does. American workers need to relearn the language of class struggle and work together to break the wheel of the capitalist machine. If we want to claim- Class struggle. Kami. <laughs> I, it's a very, you know, very good points brought up. That the United States is the greatest place on earth. We need to make it that way. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this kind of content is supported by my patrons on Patreon. This type of video, while- Seems like a really nice, great channel. And really good points, honestly. Um, much bigger picture. I think one of his best points was- or most eye-opening to me was how the in, the structure in America of offering certain wages or leave, excuse me, is when you look at someone else that offers a little bit more, it seems like such a bargain. But in reality, it's they're both kind of, especially when you get into collaborations of employers of the same in the same sector, making sure that no one really has to pay a certain amount if they all collaborate. Great points in the video. I'll be back with more history videos soon, other stuff like that. Hope I wasn't too annoying. Uh, see you guys next time.